today I'm going to be talking about the differences and similarities between African fat-tailed geckos and leopard geckos. These guys are very closely related and they have a lot of things in common and it can be really hard to tell them apart, but there are some differences that set them apart and I want to go over all of that today. So it's going to be impossible for me to hold both of the different species at the same time because last time I just took kiwi out, he was all over the place and I was juggling the gecko. So I'm just going to give you a quick look right now. This is an African fat tail gecko. This is Mango and that is her. And this right here is a leopard gecko. So you can kind of see that they are different looking, but I'm going to go way more into it in depth in this video and you'll see more clips of these cuties. So the African fat tail geckos are actually um, scientifically known as the Hemithiconix caudicinctus, and I probably messed that up because I'm horrible with these names, but I'm trying my best. But that is their scientific name, and then leopard geckos are scientifically known as Eublifferus macalaris. And again, probably just butchered that as well, but I'm trying. So I'm going to start off with the similarities between these geckos because they are very similar in appearance and that's what makes it so difficult to tell them apart. When I was first getting into these geckos, I could not tell them apart for the life of me. And I thought it was so difficult because they just look so similar. And there's so many different morphs that it would just really get confusing, but hopefully this video will help to make it a little bit easier to tell the two apart. So I'm going to start off with similarities and obviously as I mentioned just now they look very similar in appearance and that's because they have a similar morphology meaning they have similar characteristics in appearance. They're two of the larger gecko species you for a day. They are terrestrial members that have well-developed fully functional eyelids and a lack of toe pads. So you guys may be more familiar with crested geckos, whereas they have those toe pads or day geckos and they can climb up walls and glass and things. These geckos cannot do that. So African fat tails and leopard geckos do not have those toe pads, so they don't have the ability to climb up walls such as other geckos. They're way more terrestrial, meaning that they can climb. If you look at their feet, they're just very different looking. It looks like they have like long little toes kind of like this. And that is because they can't climb up walls or anything and they're just very terrestrial geckos. And again, with crested geckos or gargoyle geckos, um, these guys actually do have eyelids, whereas the crested and gargoyles don't. So these geckos can blink, unlike crested geckos and gargoyle geckos. But even though they can blink, they still do lick their eyeballs to clean them, so that's really interesting and you'll still get to see that cool little characteristic from these geckos. They can both lose and regenerate their tails. And so this is the defense mechanism. If a predator were to grab their tail, um, they can drop their tail and then regrow a new one. However, the second tail that they grow back isn't going to look like the original. It can be a little bit more bulbous and just not as attractive as the original tail. Um, but it's very important for these geckos to keep their tails. You want to avoid that at all costs. So if you own one of these geckos, you never want to pull on their tail or anything um, because they use their tails for fat storage. So a lot of them may go into brumation in the winter time, which means they aren't going to be eating as much. They're going to slow down and they're going to use that fat storage in their tail. And that sustains them for quite a long time because of all of that extra fat storage that they have. Both of these geckos are pretty long lived. They live from 10 to 20 years, which is a pretty long time. And again, with the similar appearance, they both have very large heads and they're kind of larger bodied geckos. So they both are just very similar in that appearance factor. They both also look like they are always smiling. So if you look at their face directly when they're looking straight at you, it always looks like these geckos are smiling, which just makes you melt and fall in love with them. It's like one of the cutest characteristics, but they both have it. African fat tails and leopard geckos do have the same exact dietary requirements as well. They are insectivores. So everything is going to be the same in that department. They're both also very similar in temperament. There are a couple of differences, but I will cover that later. But generally, both of these geckos are very nice geckos. They are not known to be biting or being very feisty. There's always gonna be that one that is, but for the most part, generally, 
These geckos are really, really nice. So those are all of the similarities between these two geckos, and there's actually quite a few more differences, which you may be surprised because by looking at them, they look so similar, but there are a lot of differences, so that's what I'm gonna cover now. So the very first difference is that leopard geckos are more common in the pet trade. So if you're at a pet store or something, you will very rarely find an African fat tail, but you are most likely going to be seeing a leopard gecko. They're just way more common in the pet trade. Um, people are getting more and more into African fat tail geckos, so I'm sure that we're going to be seeing them more in the future. So when it comes to appearance, African fat tail geckos actually stay a little bit smaller than leopard geckos. They're kind of stubbier, more stout than leopard geckos, whereas they're a little bit longer. Leopard gecko females usually reach 7 to 8 inches, where the males reach 8 to 10 inches. And then the African fat tails usually reach seven to nine inches, and then the females are slightly smaller. So because of that size difference, um, the leopard geckos would require more of a 20 gallon as an adult, and the African fat tail geckos do just fine in a 10 gallon. Although you can go larger for either one of them, you just wanna make sure you're supplying the warm hides, the humid hides, lots of places for them to hide and feel secure in that enclosure when there's a lot of space. So the main way that I can tell an African fat tail gecko apart from a leopard gecko is their eyes. African fat tail geckos have solid black or dark brown looking eyes. They're super adorable. I absolutely love their eyes. It's probably my favorite feature on them. But the leopard geckos typically have way more colorful eyes. You can see a pupil on them, whereas you can't see that on the African fat tails because it's the solid black. But leopard geckos do have a visible pupil and they kind of have like blue or silver eyes. Um, some of them are eclipse. I have an eclipse and she has a lot of black towards the front. It's like half of her eye is black but then the rest is blue. So it's really interesting. So the leopard geckos will always have more colorful eyes than an African fat tail where it's just going to be one solid dark color. Another difference between these geckos is actually their feel. Leopard geckos have way more bumpy skin. So as you pet these guys, like they just have these mounds on their skin, these really big bumps. African fat tails also have bumps, but they're way smaller and less significant, so you can't feel them as much. So they overall feel smoother than a leopard gecko. So this is just going to be very generally because now with all of the crazy morphs going on, it is like impossible, but usually you would say a leopard gecko is more yellow. African fat tails are usually more brown or gray gray, but it's kind of impossible to really generalize these guys now because there are so many crazy morphs going on. They're so beautiful. You can have purple leopard geckos, pink leopard geckos, white leopard geckos, um, even melanistic. And then there's like the Oreo African fat tail geckos that are so cool looking. They're white and black. So there's just so many different things going on. It's kind of impossible to try and tell these guys apart based upon the color because of the variety in morphs. Um, but typically it would just be generally like if you have a normal leopard gecko, it's going to be yellow and then an African fat tail gecko is going to be more brown. So leopard geckos and African fat tail geckos actually do not come from the same places geographically, which is a huge difference when it comes to the care for these guys. So leopard geckos are native to rock dry grasslands of South Asian Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Northwest India, and even some parts of Iran. They have a 30 to 40% humidity requirement, which is extremely low. However, you do still wanna make sure that you're supplying these guys with a humid hide because that really helps with shedding. And if they don't shed properly, they can end up losing toes and things and you don't want that to happen. So that's just something for the leopard geckos. Because of where they come from, they also are adapted to having a very warm temperature. So they do need a hot hide that can reach 88 to 90 degrees with an ambient temperature of 73 degrees. So African fat tail geckos actually come from West Africa. They also have a dry arid habitat, but it's more tropical and because of that, they do require a little bit higher of a humidity level, which is the main difference when it comes to the care between a leopard gecko and an African fat tail gecko, which means that they will need a humid hide as well as you will need to spray down their entire enclosure every single night just to make sure that it's retaining that 
that humidity level requirement that they need. They will also need a hot hide that reaches 90 to 95 degrees, similar to the leopard geckos. Um, the care is literally exactly the same other than the humidity requirement. So the next difference between these geckos is the time that they actually wake up. So a lot of people think that these geckos are up all day and that's false. Um, African fat tail geckos are actually nocturnal, so they will be coming out at nighttime only. That's when they want to hunt and eat, and then they sleep during the day. And then leopard geckos typically will be sleeping all day. They're actually called crepuscular, meaning that they come out during the dawn and dusk time. So during those hours, that's when they're going to be coming out and looking for food, and that would be the best time to feed them. So they are not nocturnal, and the African fat tails are nocturnal. And the very last difference between these two types of geckos is their behavior. So from what I have seen with my geckos and my experiences with African fat tails and leopard geckos is that they're both great in temperament. They're both great pets. They're both pretty easy to handle. They aren't very bitey. They don't have much attitude. However, one I find is way sweeter than the other kind. When leopard geckos are born, they are very commonly known to be feisty and they're just like, they literally just scream and they can be quite nippy and sometimes that can also last throughout their lifetime. There are some nippy leopard geckos, although it's rare, but they do have a little bit more feisty attitude for sure than an African fat tail gecko. African fat tail geckos are literally the angels of the gecko world. They are just the sweetest, most calm geckos. Um, they do not move as much either. They will literally just sit in your hand, whereas a leopard gecko can be a little bit more spastic and wants to keep moving and moving. So those are the two differences when it comes to behavior. Not every single leopard gecko is going to be a little spaz. However, generally I find that they are a little bit more spastic than the African fat tail geckos. And those are all of the similarities and differences between these two geckos. So I hope that this video was helpful. Um, the more that you look into these guys and see them and work with them, the easier it becomes to be able to tell them apart. And again, you wanna make sure you just know which one you have. That way you can provide the proper care because the care is a little bit different, although most of it is very similar. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.